Today we'll be joined by U.S. Men's National Team defender DeAndre Yedlin and midfielder Yunus Musa. If you would like to get in the queue to ask a question of DeAndre, you can do so right now by virtually raising your hand at the bottom of the screen. DeAndre's first time back in the U.S. camp since 2019. He is the, the most capped player on the roster with 62 caps and also the most capped player in official competitions with 27 total. We're going to begin straight with questions and we're going to start with Jeff Carlisle from ESPN. Thanks, Michael. Hi, DeAndre. Hello. Um, what have you found to be the biggest differences in, in you know, from playing in the Premier League to, to playing in Turkey? I mean, what were there any cultural things that they maybe kind of threw you for a loop? Yeah, I mean, there's big cultural things. You know, obviously you're going to a, you know, really completely different part of the world. Um, but I really, I really enjoyed that aspect of it. I think that was, you know, one of the things that kind of drove me to to leave England was just to see a different culture and, and kind of get out of my comfort zone again. Um, um, as far as football wise, um, I was actually quite surprised by Turkey. It's a, you got some very good players there, very technical players, uh, very physical. I think. You know the one thing that separates the Premier League, um, and this may be from a lot of other leagues in the world, also is just the end quality. Is you know you make a mistake and you're for sure to get punished. Um, you know, not not just with Turkey, but with other leagues as well. You know, sometimes the the end quality isn't um, as good. So that's that's really the that's really the only thing that I found. But it's a it's a great league, um, very competitive league. Um, and you know I've had a great experience there so far. Next will be Paul Tenorio from The Athletic. Uh, thanks, Michael. Um, DeAndre, how have you found it just to kind of to be playing, getting confidence again? Um, what's it been like for you, th this changeover? And, and what does it mean to you to, to be back in camp, to see that, that payoff right away of making a move, kind of having it work the way it has, and, and getting right back into the national team picture? Yeah, it's been great. I mean, I think, you know, that's that's obviously what we're in this profession for is to play. So anytime, you know, you're not playing it, it can be a bit of a struggle. And, uh, you know, especially mentally, it can be a bit of a struggle. Um, but just being able to get back um, playing, um, getting my form back, getting my confidence back. And then finally, like you said, to be back as a part of this group um, has been huge. Um, you know, it's great to be here with these guys. And it's, it's amazing to see the talent that's here um, and, you know, the age of some of these players is, is incredible um, and, and how talented they are. Um, you know, I think we're entering sort of a golden era for, for U.S. soccer, so it's, it's really exciting to, to be involved in it and, and to have been watching it also. Um, it's, it's great to see the, the steps that are being made and, you know, you have to give kudos to, to Greg and the staff for, for really putting this team together because they've done a great job. Next will be Ivis Galarsep from SBI Soccer. Hey, for DeAndre, I want to ask you about the, the system, uh, playing in Greg's system, obviously, the last time around uh, when you were in. We saw you some on the wing as well as fullback. How do you feel like you're kind of adapting and learning to fit into that system and trying to, to fill the role and to play the role that he wants you to play as a right back? In a follow up on Junior and Green being back in, obviously, you guys go back, you're on the World Cup team together. What do you think about just him being back in and, and yeah, um, as far as the system goes, um, you know, I, I've obviously been invol involved with uh, Greg's system a little bit before, so um, I needed a little bit of a refresher on it, but um, it's, it's, been, it's been good. Um, you know, it's nice to get back and, and, you know, yeah, like you said, get involved with this system again. Um, it hasn't been too difficult, um, just like I said, because I've been involved with it before, but you know, it is sometimes a bit intricate. So, um, you know, I did need that refresher. And for Julian, it's great to see him back. You know, I think uh, a lot of people thought he was done and fell off, um, but he did an unbelievable job getting back, you know, getting with the team, playing all the time, finding his form, and then building the confidence and ultimately getting called back in the team uh, or called back in the national team. Um, you know, that's, that's what it's about. Um, and I think, you know, He's he's done great, you know, so far from what I've seen of him. Um, he he's done great and matured a lot, I think, um, which is which is great to see. And then obviously, just as a person, to see him again is great because, you know, we had a we had a really good friendship, or we still have a really good friendship. Um, 
but I haven't seen him in person in quite a long time, so it's good to see him. I think we might be digging out a photo for a throwback Thursday tomorrow. <laughs> Next will be Brian Shredda from American Soccer Now. Thank you, Michael, and thank you, uh, DeAndre. Um, DeAndre, uh, at one time, particularly back in 2014, you were the new kid. You were you were a kid on this team. You were a newcomer. Yeah. Um, now you're still not old, but what's it like being a veteran leader and being on um, being one of the most experienced players on the team? What roles do, are are being asked of you, and and uh, and what is that experience like with this group of players? Yeah, it's a it's an interesting role. I think you know. Um, obviously is to be a leader um you know i think when you look at any veteran player that's kind of the the role that you're expected to play but you also have to look at the fact you have guys in here um very young guys that are also leaders as well you know they they've been in this system a lot now and and you know through the reins a lot now so they're they're leaders as well so i think um you know with this group there's just a lot of natural leaders um so as far as you know being a leader in naturally for me isn't my you know I don't think it's my natural born uh, kind of skill um, but you know you have so many natural I think just natural leaders here uh, with the younger guys and obviously me coming in as a vet um, you know kind of pushing myself into that role um, you know there's there's tons of leaders on this team which is which is great to see because I think you need that especially when you're on the field. Next, we'll go to Ronald Blum from the Associated Press. Hi, DeAndre. Hello. What do you look at as the challenges of playing this weekend in Switzerland, then three days later in altitude in Denver? And what do you think the challenge is like? Recording stuff. Going from Turkey to Florida to Hunt. Trinidad, then the game in the U.S., then Honduras, back to Turkey, and doing it again every four weeks. Well, I think you said it right there. Recording I mean, the, in progress. The, the, the number one thing, uh, I think obviously we're playing good teams. That's, that's the first challenge. Second thing is obviously um, with these games sp specifically, we're playing at altitude, um, which always makes the game tougher. And then the third thing is uh, obviously the turnaround. You don't have a lot of turnaround time to recover. So um, those are the three main things that you know we're really focusing on, uh, especially this camp. And... Um, They've pointed it out that you know we're doing it this way to make sure that we're ready for when for when World Cup qualifiers come around to kind of give us a little taste of how it's going to be. Next will be Jose Rodriguez. Um, thank you, DeAndre. I wanted to ask you um, a little bit about facing um, Concacaf teams uh, back in an official setup. Um, talking about Nations League and, and Honduras and semifinal on the semifinals, the, the U.S. Well, it's, it's a very good record in the last four games, but they are all friendless. I think they've scored 23 goals, which is a very impressive. So what, what changes when you play in an official match in CONCACAF, and especially against Honduras? Thank you. I mean, when it's an official match, I think, you know, for, for anybody, I think there can be a bit more motivation. You know, you're fighting for a trophy and you're playing for a trophy. Um, so that's, I mean, that's really the main thing, I think. You know, I I think a lot of people say you're sh there shouldn't be more motivation because you know, a game's a game, obviously. But I think then you know naturally there'd be a bit more motivation when you're fighting and and playing for for a trophy. Next will be Ryan Talmich from Gold.com. Thank you, and hey DeAndre, you know, obviously, you know, like as Michael said, it's been since 2019 since you've been here, and, and it's not that long of a time, but things kind of change. You know, you look around at, at young guys like Eunice and, and Gio and, and Daryl DK, and, you know, a year ago, those guys weren't even maybe on the national team radar. Or, mm -hmm. I mean, they were, but, you know, they weren't in this group, and, 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 and now they're, they're key parts of it. You know, things kind of yeah. change, and, you know, that makes me think to your experience, you know, where, where you went from, you know, U20 to senior call-up to add a World Cup all within a year. Yeah. You know, things kind of change quickly with this national team stuff. Yeah. What are some of the things that, that you can kind of take away from your own rise to that senior group that, that can kind of help those guys? And, and what are some of the things that you've seen from them that it, now that it has all kind of gone, gone so quick for them? Yeah, I think, I mean, for them, they're, in a, they're all on very good teams and very good uh, professional environments. So that's, that's number one. Um, the second thing is uh, just keeping your head down. Um, you know, there's going to be 
obviously being young, I think our country, uh, we have a tendency to really hype up younger players um, because we're excited about it, as we should be. Um, but, you know, I think sometimes that can be a bit too much and it can put a bit too much pressure on these players and put too much expectation on them. Um, so I think I'm, I, number one is really just keep your head down, try to block the noise out a little bit, whether it be good or bad. Um, you know, that's, that's what I tried to do. Um, and then, I mean, the last thing, just have fun with it. You know, you, at the fact that you're here just says enough, you know what I mean? You're here for a reason and they're, they're obviously all great players. Um, so it's important that they just have fun and, and just keep doing what they've been doing at their clubs and, and, they'll, and they'll strive here. Next will be Gustavo Lopez from Territorio MLS. Hey, uh, Gustavo from Territorio MLS. Uh, good to be talking to you. Uh, just a question: How is like you and Tejina Das are both right right backs and also play both play for great clubs in Europe? How is the relationship between you guys in the camp and also during the season? Do you guys have any contact at all or something like this? Thank you. Um. In the in the camp, it's a great relationship. Um, during the during the seasons, not a ton of contact. Um, you know, Serginho kind of came up with that younger generation. Um, so he, I think, those guys have their their own little group. Um, but no, Serginho's a obviously a great kid, and he's a great player. Um, you know, he can play right or left. Uh, just technically so gifted. Um, you know, obviously playing at one of the biggest clubs in the world. I think so. You know, for me, it's it's really just to come in, do the best that I can do, and try to push him to to be the best that he can be. You know, and it's the same for him to to push me to be the best that I can be. And then you also have Reggie Cannon, you have Brian Reynolds, you know, you have uh, Anthony Robinson, um, all all great young players. Um, and you know, like I've said so many times before, it's just great to see. It's great to see um, the U.S. being put on the map um, as far as soccer or football, whatever you want to call it, goes. Last question is for Sean McCaffrey. Thank you, Sergino. Soccer Long Island Magazine here. Sorry, DeAndre. We, um, we know that players are always asked by their teams to buy into a system. You're a player who just bought into a team. Can you shed a little insight onto that? I'm sorry, say that again? I'm questioning you as far as buying an interest in the loyal. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Going after that and just comparing it to a player buys into the system of a team or a player that bought into it. Yeah, team. yeah, yeah. Compare and contrast. Yeah. Um, I mean, for for me, buying into the loyal was, I for, when was it? It was last year when, you know, they obviously made headlines with, you know, how they, how they handled, um, you know, certain situations um, on the pitch. I think everybody knows them. Um, you know that and that really caught my eye and um, you know it it really just opened my eyes that wow there's a you know professional club out here that will you know give up a spot potentially in the playoffs you know to to kind of bring awareness to to these issues that we have that in my opinion are bigger than sport and um, I think they set a great example for the rest of the world not just for the US not um, just for soccer but for the rest of the world in all sports and for me, it was a situation that I wanted, I, or it's a, it's a club that I wanted to be a part of. Um, you know, obviously, as a player, I'm not, but, um, you know, I was fortunate enough to, to come in as a supporting owner. And um, I'm, I'm very excited to, to be a part of, to be a part of the Loyal. Um, and, you know, just looking to help in any way that I can. But, yeah, for me, I think a lot of people would look at me and think, oh, he's doing it for financial reasons and stuff like this. But... I just really, really wanted to be a part of, you know, a club that would take that kind of stance to social issues. Um, that was very important for me.